Hey guys, Chandler Giesbrecht here. Today we're going to be talking about how to build a, a vertical return plenum box for when you need to place a furnace or an air handler in a vertical position. So, when we're building a vertical plenum box, um, you have three different pieces that you're making. You've got your sides, like this right here, A and B I like to call them, and then you've got the part that actually goes up for the bottom and then the, the back. So you're gonna have three pieces total. So I've got my sides already laid out with my quarter inch marks so I can do the bend in the break. And I've already got my notches made here on the bottom and I'm just laying out my top, which in this case is 25 and a half by 55. So I'm gonna lay that out and then cut it. Okay, so this is 36 inch wide metal. My shear is 36 inches wide, but when I need to cut something on my table, when I need to cut something the length that's wider than 36, I have to use my shear. So I just simply cut that. It's a little bit aggravating, but I don't do a lot of metal work like this. So it's, So when you're laying out your, this will be my back, front, and my bottom. So what I'm trying to accomplish is 16 inches of height. So I actually want to mark at 17 because my unit's going to sit one inch down at the on the bottom, or excuse me, on the back right here. And then I come here and I measure this way, and I mark 17. And then in between these two marks, I should have 21 inches because that's the depth of my unit. Up here, we're fixing to put this in the break, and we're going to bend this one inch in so that the front of the unit will sit there. And then this will stay straight so that the back of the unit will butt into the back of there after we put our bar lock on. Okay, so you take, and I'm going to measure an inch right here to make sure I have an inch from the edge of my, my break. To my metal and I'm going to make sure that my metal's laying in there so that this is up on my uh, Pittsburgh seam. Lock it down and bend up. Next I'll unlock my brake. Make sure to unlock it enough. I'm going to slide it through until I get to my marks. They're a little tricky to see when you're using a uh, scribe, true scribe. But I'm gonna now I'm gonna measure to 16 inches because I've eliminated an inch right there. So yeah, there's my mark right there, and there's my mark right there. So 16. It's always a little tricky to get this just right. 16 and 16. Lock the break down. Yeah. Again. So now this is my front. The front of my unit is going to come and sit right here and rest easy on that piece. And now. Another mark, it's right there. So I can see my marks on this one. So I'm gonna lock my brake back down on this side. And I'm gonna lock my brake down on this side. And just as a precaution, I'm gonna double check my measurements. 
right at 21. So we're good to go. Now I can unlock it. Pull it out. And what I now have is the front with this piece bent back. I've got my back where my actual bar lock will sit and I've got my bottom and so we are that's at 17 inches this is at 16 so this is exactly an inch higher than here and my bar lock will sit one inch down so my unit will literally sit about right here something like that and now we'll finish bending our side pieces and put them in the sides to complete our box Okay, so this right here is uh, about a quarter to three-eighths bend. That's what you always bend to go inside of your Pittsburgh seam over there to lock it in place. So you simply set it in the brake. If you line it up at the front edge of this brake, it will automatically be the right amount. However, once you've bent that first side, especially if you're bending it on three sides of a piece, like I am in this case, you have to make sure to have it actually marked prior to putting it in the brake. You're not able to bend that like that. And also when you're working this brake, you don't have to necessarily open both sides every single time, simply because you can get enough leverage by running one lever. Typically whatever, dominant, whatever is your dominant hand, mine is right. So that's what works well for me. So that's what a piece is going to look like right there after it's bent, ready to go into its actual Pittsburgh seam right here. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we've placed the side piece into the into the Pittsburgh seam, and we're just tapping it in place. So we're just tapping this into that seam. And then we're going to take, for now, and just lock that in by beating those down just a little bit. And then we'll come back and actually lock that in all the way so that, that this piece right here is completely folded down flat. So what I like to do is line up two corners. You look down here with your camera, like one here, line up in this corner and this corner, tap it in place with your hammer, and then you've got your corner, and then if you can come over to the other side and do the same thing. Now if you're building stuff really exact, like I like to try to do, you're Last corner is always your challenge point. So we're gonna work on getting that in and then we'll come back to you in just a bit. Okay. Okay, so the next step is we're going to be putting, well, we've got the box to this point, first of all. We got the sides on. It's completed, or so it looks. The only thing we're lacking is we need something for the unit to sit on. So what I do is I put bar lock, which is an easy thing to put on, but we're going to cut it to length, and then this is the channel for the actual indoor air handling unit to sit on. So we're going to cut those pieces with a bandsaw, tap them in place, and show you what that looks like finished. got my last piece here more the most important thing to remember on this is that you need to make sure to put your side pieces on first then put your back piece on at the very end and the reason for that is now 
you've got your air handler sitting on a little bit of a slant and that way it will for sure drain correctly and you won't have an issue. And when that you're done, your box is finished minus sealing and just attaching to the actual air handling unit. Thanks for watching.